Oh, good yes, morning. This is Leo Kane. You think uh, I'm not paying attention, and I am. I, I thought you were just trying to get the Facebook Live going, and I wanted to make everyone think that Katrina was out for yet another week, and this is the Leo Kane okay, two hours. Okay, stop it. Listen, all right, so I'm just going to say it because people do ask me. They're like, where have you been? You haven't been on the air in two weeks. So they listen. As a matter of fact, one of our clients signed a listing agreement with us last night. A listening agreement? Listing agreement I with us. listening agreements. Does that oh, mean they only it. listen to your show, or is what yeah. is the listening agreement? Yeah, they, as a matter of fact, Leo, they told me specifically they tune out when it's only you. Just saying. Just kidding. Oh. Anyway, no, thank you so much. Actually, I owe you a big, big thank you because two weeks ago, I actually lost one of my childhood friends, and it was a really rough, rough day, f night for me. I was up really late, and I really just couldn't make it into the studio the next day, so... I appreciate you very, very much, Leo, for holding down the fort. And last week, I was in Austin for Keller Williams' big mega camp conference. Well, I didn't even have to show up last week. Our hosts could have had their own hour. And they would, no one would have noticed. <laughs> yes. Well, he did not Facebook Live. That's all me. So if I'm not Leo here, that doesn't up, happen. Go up. Up. So anyway, without further ado, we have a great show lined up for you guys today. So today is no disaster, so you have no disaster. And we'll talk all about that in just a few minutes right after we introduce our guest. So the purpose of the show today is really just to spread some awareness on how to prepare as we have some of these storm seasons that can roll in. We're right in the beginning. We haven't seen anything yet. And I think, um, you know, as uh, we have those great years back to back with no storms, people can get a little bit complacent and think, oh, I don't need a generator. I don't need any water. I don't need any flashlights. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about a little bit of all of those things as we roll on today's show. So if I mess up your name, please correct me. But I have Miss Laura Wilcoxon. Correct. That's right. All right. She is the Emergency Management Assistant Director for Pasco County. That's right. And we'll talk about what that means in a few minutes. And then we have a friend of the show, Corey Deirdorf. He is Pasco County Fire Rescue Public Information Officer. It's funny, after I had you on, I see you like on TV. I see you everywhere now. Oh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? So you, you get to do all the fun stuff, right? And like appear in media and all those jazzy things. I do. I get to represent a uh, great department who uh, has a uh, over 600 great firefighters that are out there every day serving the county and um we had a the lot i didn't realize this but the last time we had you on was christmas we did our holiday it was. show yeah and so we talk all about the holiday lights and some of those hazards you guys see around the holiday time so we'll do something similar but different maybe this year absolutely and of course mr leo came with barrel engineering and inspection my sidekick and also francisco diaz he is with heaven sent construction welcome Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. We're thank glad to hear, have yeah. you here very much. And so we're going to talk a little bit about you guys and then talk about some of the stuff you do. So let's tell the person listening real quick, what do you do? Explain your job. Who Who's an ideal person for you? Laura? No, emergency management, we're here to basically help and coordinate disaster response activities. So the best way I could describe what emergency management does is if you think of a musical orchestra, you have all these different musical instruments playing the same song, same page, same tempo, but you have a conductor up there trying to keep everybody together. So, ex so. explain what that means. For example, if we have a storm roll through, right? So we have to be prepared for that. What are you doing? What's your job? When the county activates uh, and gets ready for a disaster, we are always prepared 24-7, 365. We're monitoring situations so that way we can start early, uh, start making protective actions. So when we know a storm's coming, Pasco County experiences a lot of flooding. So we're working with our stormwater department. We're working with fire rescue to check out our areas that are known to be the highest hazard to those flood operations. Right. Uh, we're constantly talking to the state to get information from their uh, weather spotters to find out what's going to happen right so we i had a little bit of inside knowledge of this just because my husband works for the city of tampa he works for stormwater and so he deals with those things so the, what we call our first first responders mm -hmm. right like yeah. everybody knows police and fire are first responders but you have people like stormwater and department of public works which is the people the crews that he manages they're like the first first responder so yes. if the trees go down they're the ones that go in and clear the road so that the fire trucks and the police can actually get through Mm -hmm. well, so there's a lot of stuff that happens when a storm rolls through. Yeah. So the actually the last time when Irma came through, 
Pat, George, and I were actually on a cruise together with a whole group of people. And my husband never would have been allowed to get off, but it was already planned. And so they were pretty mad because everybody had to work. (laughs) And he didn't. All right, Corey, tell the person listening, what do you do? What's your role? So uh, I'm the spokesperson for the fire department. Um, We are uh, one of the largest fire departments in the state. Um, And we work every day to make sure that the residents of Pasco County stay safe. And we're also trying to, uh, you know, try some new innovative ideas and uh, make sure that we can uh, use the taxpayers' dollars wisely to make sure that they have the best coverage for, uh, for their, to keep their family safe. So tell me what you mean by that. How we're using the taxpayer dollars wisely? Before that. No, oh, wait a minute. It already escaped me. <laughs> wait, that, no, you wanted to ask um, how they're more innovative in getting cats That's out of what trees. I was ask. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah so we have bigger ladders um, with the, where we can put more firefighters to scare the cats. No. Um, Thank you. Every time I get you together. <laughs> it is. It's fun every time. Uh, no, we're, uh, what we do is right now one of our biggest focuses on firefighter health and safety. So we have a lot of cancers. In fact, there's uh, 16 different uh, unique types of cancers to firefighters. And firefighters are already 80% more likely to have cancer in their life than anywhere else no we talked about that before it was so incredible yeah and, and, and we're thankful for the legislature that's uh, passing some bills uh, not only with cancer but with uh, PTSD awareness as well so we're uh, we're using that and we're trying to not only use the taxpayer dollars wisely but make sure that we're protecting our firefighters so not only do we protect them on the front end by not getting cancer but that also keeps our health care costs and cost of taxpayers down as well sure absolutely and then Francisco tell me a little bit about yourself what's your background what do you do what's your role as we roll into storm season yeah so i'm francisco diaz with heaven sent construction and um my role is um right now my primary focus is uh my roofing division so coming into this season now you know making sure everybody's prepared and know what type of roof system they have and what you know cautions they should take prior to coming into this season that's one of those things like you're usually not thinking about your roof until you have a storm you got some water coming in then you're going to be thinking about the roof right but leo you can probably chime in on that because you deal with this stuff regularly you see it during the inspection so unless it changes hands it's usually not something people are paying attention to yeah i mean i had an unfortunate client yesterday because we do work for attorneys on occasion to help with their storm claims and this person had adopted a tile roof and their home inspector didn't inspect the roof Um, so they had a roof leak a month after they moved in and they were trying to tie it back to a storm event and there was no storm event to tie it back to so we end up looking at the home inspection report and then what the current roof photos were and yeah we realized their home inspection company didn't inspect the roof and that homeowner now needs to pay sixty thousand dollars to have the roof replaced tile roof is not cheap no they're not Um, as a matter of fact i saw something kind of similar a couple weeks ago i had we actually negotiated a new roof to be replaced as part of the deal for a buyer that we represented and what happened was the the, uh, the something happened and the homeowner at that time which was the buyer the homeowner now which was the buyer at that time had the it reinspected and they said oh this roof was not installed right of course the seller paid for it so they picked who was going to do it and um, needless to say, the company was out of business, so all the numbers didn't work. Um, so I did a little bit of homework, and I was able to actually find a lawsuit that was filed with them represented. And surprisingly enough, um, the attorney called me back, and then the guy called me back. I think they opened under another name, but they offered to do the repair. Nice. So, Leo, I gave them your information. I said, you might want to just have an independent inspection um, being that they kind of botched it up the first time, make sure they're doing it right the next time around. Um, but if they're going to cover it under warranty, that's awesome, especially yeah, being they're well, not around. Well, I know from the from the, the legal side of things, not a lawyer, but legal <laughs> side of things, even if the roofer's out of business, if that CGL policy was in effect at the time, they could still go after the insurance even though there is no roofer. So I... Uh, Good point. I didn't yeah. think about that. And that's one of the things, once you start diving in with attorneys, you start thinking about that. But, you know, and, and the, hence, that's probably why when I started poking around and saw the lawsuit and talked to the attorney, the guy called me, called us back. So, you know, we're just looking to get them to cooperate and help out, help fix the issue. But the whole thing started, they have a chimney um, with a fireplace, and it was reading wet around there. So it was something to do with the flashing. I don't really know all the details. You would more than I. Yeah, I mean, it's quite common. And Francisco, you can chime in here since you do a lot of roofing and uh, wood frame repair. <laughs> that basically the old Florida building code didn't really have much in the way of flashing where your chimney meets the roof. Um, so what ends up happening there, Francisco? Yeah, that's like the most common area for a leak is around those chimneys. And a lot of them are the old brick. So there's not really a way to flash it. So sometimes we have to cut into it and put a riglet on top or a polyurethane bead 
I like the way he talks. I know. What's awesome. a riglet? Like the listener's going, what? It's like a Z flashing. We call them Z flashings because they look like big big Zs on the side of the on the side of the building, like where stucco meets a roof wall or where a chimney meets a roof wall. But they're, they're really helpful in keeping water out. I mean, you definitely want like two or three inches of metal between your roof and that chimney. Sure, absolutely. All right, listen, our off-air number is 813-377-2775. We've got to roll to a quick break. You can call or text us at 813-377-2775. When we come back, we're going to talk about where to start and how to be prepared, especially if you're new to Florida. We'll be back in a minute. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is Leo King with Barrel Engineering and Inspection, talking all about knowing disaster for knowing disaster. the I I-N-G was not supposed to be there? You did good enough. That'll okay. work. Good enough. This is Leo Kane. Good enough here on Tampa Home Talk. <laughs> you're it's a host. A loop. Are you making fun of me? I feel like you're making fun of me. <laughs> I'm making fun of me. I've okay. been the host for the last two weeks. I'm just now poking fun of myself. You did do all the work. You know, can you imagine if we left Pat George with him? Oh, that oh, would boy. be awesome. Awesome, awesome, hey, awesome. Hey, Pat, if Leo doesn't come, then it's all you. You want to run the show? I'll do a little bit of it. Uh, yeah, I can handle that. <laughs> producer have you been to the beasley studio yeah yeah the so first the other actually the, the first time uh, i was on the show with okay, you we were okay. over there in the closet it's a little different yeah <laughs> dynamic right <laughs> here there can you imagine like doing a show with pat george and he's on the other side of the glass <laughs> you know the thing i liked about when they came to the studio they'd bring me breakfast so what do i have this morning just gummy bears so i put a <laughs> A bowl of gummy bears with some milk and hey, we, my uh, breakfast. We stopped bringing you breakfast that one time. There was a whole barbecue spread, and everyone in the, everyone in the station but us got to have some of it. Well, he, <laughs> well yes, I remember. And that. he says they, but really it's Katrina that would bring him food, so, you know. I miss all those days. <laughs> but they, they have open open DoorDash, all those things. I'll have to give them some McDonald's. But I'll be right with there. you next week. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. What's going to happen this? It, okay. I just found out. Perfect I was never timing. told, but I just found out. Good segue. Okay. So next week, <laughs> next week is Florida's largest home, sh- home show. We are actually going to be there at the Florida's largest home nice. show. We're going to be there all four days. So come on out and meet us. Come on out and check out some of the exhibitors. It's going to be at the Florida State Fairgrounds. And we are actually doing a remote broadcast from the fairgrounds next weekend. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's oh, going to be a blast. And so, Pat, this is the perfect time for us to give out tickets for the home show because there's actually a cost to get in. I think they're like eight bucks a piece, something like that. So uh, I, I'm pushing for as many tickets as I can get for you guys. So if you're open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not this weekend, but next weekend over Labor Day, one of those days, and you want some tickets, call on our studio lines here, and Pat George will take your information, 888-404-1010, 888-404-1010. Let's go ahead and take the 10th caller, shall we? 10th caller? 10th caller, 888-404-1010. I haven't given out that number in a while. I know. It's my memory. All right, so Laura, let's talk all about um, some of the frequently asked questions you get, and so I'll run through them, and then you can just kind of jump in wherever you want, but part of the biggest thing you do is making sure people have a plan, Mm -hmm. knowing their zone, making a go-to kit, knowing where to find information, and registering for special needs. So start at the top. Like, where's the best place to start? Let's let's just imagine somebody's new to Florida, right? Finding information. Know your hazards, knows what uh, you're vulnerable to and where you live. Uh, that would be your top thing that you got to do. And you can find information. Every county has a disaster planning guide. Uh, Pasco County just revamped theirs. We go through every disaster or hazard that we could have in our county. And it gives tips on how to be prepared before, what to do during, how to respond after. And on the very back, we made it very simple to find phone numbers that you can call if you need further information. Now, when you say know your zone, are you talking about the flood zone or are you talking about something else? We're talking about evacuation zones. Mm -hmm. So evacuation zones are all about storm surge. So they have nothing to do with freshwater flooding or ponding that happens if a retention pond or something like that happens. This is all based off of weather service data that shows if we are getting this kind of storm coming through, we expect storm surge to come in this far off the coast. So the evacuation route, I imagine, would route you around those things to where... They get you away from the water that would come in. Okay, perfect. Makes sense. And then the go-to kit, what are you recommending that people put in there? It starts off having a supply of food and water, uh, non-perishable food, canned food, jarred peanut butter, things like that. If you have canned food, make sure you have a can opener. Uh, the manual one because the electric, mm-hmm. yeah, if electricity's out, your electric one won't work. Isn't there an app for that? Like, I think so, yeah. <laughs> An app. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> with water, you, we've been talking for years about having a three-day supply. Things that we've noticed after Hurricane Michael came in through the panhandle, we're starting to preach have a seven to ten day supply if you can. That's what I was thinking. Like if you've, I've lived here my whole life, just like you, Francisco, we were talking about that. How, how much do you, like in a, if you know a storm's coming in, how much food do you stock up on well i'm like super prepared i live like on 50 acres on a farm so you got all kinds of chickens i have i have a whole pallet of waters so i have yeah i have my own gas station i have a couple hundred gallons of fuel we're coming to your house okay have you seen his family he's got like a two-day supply yeah (laughs) (laughs) all of that's a two-day supply oh my god five kids (laughs) wow okay but plenty of cattle so we have enough meat there you go a week like a week and you know that's just me living through a storm not having power for a week right when in 04 we had the back-to-back storms I remember that. <laughs> you couldn't even go to a hotel because they didn't have electricity either, or the ones that did were booked. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So some of the other things is it, when you're buying supplies, you don't have to do it all in one shopping trip. You know, you can be doing this throughout the year. Look at your pantry, what you already have. You don't need to go out and buy it specifically for storm season. This is all things that you can just have on hand. Yeah, have something you can make. Have something you can grill. Yeah. Propane tanks will be really good. Like, we would have hurricane parties. So, like, you know, my husband would leave. He'd be gone at work. And so the power was out. We didn't know how long it was going to be restored. We would start cooking everything in the freezer. So we literally fed the firefighters, the stormwater crews. Oh, everybody. nice. Well, I mean, you don't want it to go bad. And you guys are working. So why not? It doesn't make Absolutely. sense, right? Absolutely. Well, my favorite preparedness tip is eat your ice cream first. You there know, you if electricity is going to go out, <laughs> do the ice cream first. It makes sense. All right. So what outside of water, non-perishable foods, maybe flashlight, what else do you think are the most important yeah, things? You need to have things that you can use to take care of yourself. So if you're on prescription medication, talk to your doctor early, go to your pharmacist early, you know, find out what meds, you know, you have to have. A lot of times you could go to a 90 day supply. Um, but that's all talking to your doctor. If you have kids, make sure you have entertainment like board games, books, cards, things like that. I know it sounds horrible, but like the times that the power does go out, it doesn't seem like it's really long enough. I actually like it. I enjoy yeah. it because we don't get those, those times really now. Like we just don't get the disconnected times. Mm-hmm. Uh, just have a look at me like I have two heads. You, you don't have any kids, so you can't even comment about this. But in this day and age, especially kids are so connected to their cell phones and their devices. So just to have the power go out, right? Like right. at dinner time for two hours, I think is really a blessing because you could really just spend that time with your kids, playing a game, playing cards, like doing something that they they can't be on their phone, especially if it's dead, right? Absolutely, so, yeah. It's in the the Wi-Fi or the internet's down in the storm. Sometimes even the cell phone signals go down. Mm-hmm. So it's you know counted as a blessing. I'm sure it's old after a week, right? <laughs> but just with every what what is it with every detriment? There's a blessing. I'm not saying that quite right, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the other part that you want to also pay attention to is your furry family. You know, yes. making sure your pets need food and water too. Um, they might get what you get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. There's no power for me. Please spin the bottle. <laughs> yeah, oh but they'll definitely eat that, really. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so way, one of the last things. Over the year. What'd you say? Okay. <laughs> Registering <laughs> for special needs. I didn't listen to my own tip I gave you guys. <laughs> Registering for special needs, what does that mean? So if you're oxygen dependent or you need extra assistance with transportation, okay. have other severe health complications that you're going to need extra assistance during a storm uh, you could register for the county special needs program if you have internet you could go to the pasco county emergency management webpage and register online you can call up the county customer service phone number which is 727-847-2411 or you can even call emergency management and we can help you with that process of registration so that's great now when, they, when somebody registers do they get alerts or like text messages we have a different system for that that's okay. called alert pasco that you can register for online through the Pasco County Emergency Management website. And that's where if there is an emergency going off in an area, we can do a geographical grid on the numbers that we contact there, or we could do a whole county blast and get information out quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you another devil's advocate type question, right? So what about times like now where there's no storm? What do you do? So now's the time to be preparing, making that plan. If you have to evacuate, where are you going to go? But what do you do specifically, like in your job? We are currently going through planning, checking with all of our partner agencies to make sure that they support and can follow the plan. Then we take the plans and that we train on them to make sure that they are viable and can work. Then we go into an exercise to 
validate everything. Okay. And it's a constant cycle that we're preparing. We're making sure we have resources on hand. We're busy. No better validation than right in the moment, right? So I'm sure you tweak some stuff. After we don't, we don't want to be finding out things in the moment. So we try and prepare beforehand to know any type of gaps that we have to overcome. Sure. All right. So let's, let's stick with our number one question that we had. And I can roll it to you, Francisco. How do you prepare your home for a hurricane starting from the roof down? So you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So a lot of people want to take a look at their roof when they have an issue, but not a lot of people want to be proactive and, and do preventive maintenance. And so my advice would be, you know, to call a roofing contractor like myself, and most of us will come out and give you a free estimate or a free assessment. Or, you know, you could call barrel engineering as well, uh, you know, for a cost and, and get that checked out as well that way you can see if there's any variables can you give us an idea of a couple things to look for like if i'm a homeowner and i just kind of want to peek at something on my roof what is there something i should be seeing or noticing that i definitely need to have somebody come check it out yeah the most common thing you'll see is like you see missing shingles so when you see missing shingles you'll know that your system your roof system is is uh you know getting older and more than likely your shingles are going to be flying off your roof system, which is going to yeah. be compromised. And Definitely if there's missing shingles. Anything else? Um, what do you think, Leo? I know, it's the simple things. I mean, you look for a lot of granule loss. So, so if you have, thinking, like, if yeah. you're taking the plants out of your gutters and you see all these, like, granules and your shingles. Pebble-looking things. Yeah, Pebble-looking things. And your shingles look like they're losing all their things and they're starting to cup up like a fishbowl. Yeah, it's time to get a new roof. Yeah. All right, so when we come back, we're going to ping it over to you, Leo, and talk about how houses are built specifically to withstand hurricanes. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome, Welcome back. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, I was I was letting you do it. I, I did the other two intro ends. I guess you wanted me to do the third one. Welcome We're back. Adam this week. Oh, that is true. He normally takes us in with an insurance tip of the week. Now, Adam's tally insurance tip of the week, for that's related did to this storm. Did he leave storms. you one? Yeah, he did. Okay, go. Yeah, so this is Adam Talley's insurance tip of the week. Make sure you have insurance. There you go. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, that's just, look, we're talking all about storms yeah. and stuff. If your house gets damaged, you need to make sure you have insurance and make sure someone like Adam Talley is taking a look at it to make sure you have the proper coverages before the event actually happens. So I got to tell you a story. When I was in Austin last week, I was actually dealing with something similar. And this was so subtle and I was so busy, like running around, I almost missed it. But I got this bill and it actually wasn't Adam. He looked at my homeowners and said, no, stick where you're at. I think it's better because kind of like a grandfathered in policy. But I get this random bill for 84 bucks and I call and I'm like, why do I have this bill for $84? So I don't escrow for taxes and insurance. I pay my own. And so they're like, the agent's like, I don't know. I have no idea. And I go, well, can you find out? Because you're just sending me a bill for $84. Yeah. And it doesn't say what it's for. She's like, sure. So she calls and she says, well, they um, they canceled your homeowner's insurance for non-payment. I said, what? You took the payment with me two weeks over the phone. I gave you all my information to debit it. She said, well, they're saying your bank returned it. They didn't do it. And I said, What? How can that be? She goes, I don't know, because I put everything in and it doesn't take it if your information's not accurate. I said, well, let's call the bank. So I called the bank and they're and I said, listen, they're saying that this amount was returned, but I don't see where it ever even cleared my bank. So it's like it wasn't presented. And she says, yeah, we don't see anything on our end either. And so then they made me sign something saying that my house basically wasn't damaged oh, <laughs> so they could reinstate me. And it was like an ordeal. I was out of town. So I had to like call my assistant to run, pick up a cashier's check. Because I'm in Austin. I don't have any checks or anything. Yeah. And they made us overnight. It was crazy. I was so mad. I was like, I don't even know how that could happen. But I guess lesson to me, pay your insurance a month early. So and you that's know. your tip of the week for the Adam <laughs> Tally Tally <laughs> Insurance. But I think, so that, that relates to the tip, which is exactly why I said it. Can you imagine yeah. if we were in the middle of storm season? I had no idea, right? I was out of town. I didn't notice this $84 bill. And now I don't have insurance because something happened with the way you guys took the payment. Over well, the phone? Also, the if the storm is named and in the Atlantic, they won't even you won't bind coverage. So you, if yeah. you well, it's a renewal, and I paid before the renewal. So. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you if they if you owe them any money, and they're delinquent, and there's some storm, or you're trying to get a new policy, and there's some storm floating around out there, they will not bind the coverage. You know, I have a feeling if something like that <laughs> happened, it would have been something for our dear friend Aaron Dunavant. Of course, <laughs> she's attorney, an law. attorney that deals with this kind of stuff. Uh, when you pay your insurance company and somehow they don't renew you know, your policy. 
<laughs> I'm having a problem this year with the IRS. They seem to have lost the check I gave Sarah them. Sarah Murphy, or Sue Murphy. Yes, thank you, Pat. I want to actually announce our, our winner for the home show ticket, Sue. Thank you for listening to Tampa Home Talk. Thanks for your feedback with Pat George. We're glad you love the show. If you got an idea for something that you want to know about, let us know, and we will bring some expert guests on to talk all about it. Um, our off-air number is 813-377-2775. So if you want to uh, let us know about a show or somebody we should have on, we would love to hear from you. 813-377-2775. And we're going to also give away some more home show tickets. If you just text home show to 813-377-2775. Again, 813-377-2775. So our house is built to withstand hurricanes, Leo. It just depends. I mean, when they were built, <laughs> it depends when they were built and how much metal they've added to the wooden concrete. So a lot, long, long, a lot of technology has gone into something called the strap or the clip, and it's where your roof meets the wall. It's where your first floor meets your second floor. It's how many nails you put in the shingle. It's all the metal that's attached to your your house. Um, and Francisco can talk more about this. In in Florida, you used to only be able to put four nails in each shingle. But now how many nails do you need to put in? Six nails. Yeah, and it used to be where you could put staples to put your plywood down to your trusses. You used to just be able to put staples. Now what do you have to do? Uh, now we have to put nails, um, six feet of nails, six inches on center. So not only is it a, not only do we have to use nails now, we have to use a certain size of nail. And then also when you're retrofitting these older houses like City of Tampa, if the house is worth a certain amount of money, what do they make you do at the, at the trusses at the roof to wall when you're re-roofing? They make you put the clips in. Yeah, so, so basically... Describe the clips. What do they look like? Um, some of them look like L's, and some of them look like twisty ties. Hmm. I just, that's a good description. Yeah, that's a pretty good description. Am I wrong? No, that's right. Yeah, and that, that's what's going to keep your roof on. Um, also, we've gotten a long ways as far as impact rating, so your windows need to be able to withstand nine-pound missiles. <laughs> um, they're called missiles, but they're, they're not... Basically, it's a stick that's Flying moving up. with a force of nine pounds. has to be able to bounce off your window. Oh, what's Skylights now? 4.5? That's correct. Yeah, so you got to... I wish Adam was here. I would ask him about the windows. I would mm -hmm. say what happens if you don't have those hurricane windows because your house was built before and a storm knocks them in. Does insurance cover it? They probably do. They would. Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah it's just well, the way the Florida Building Code works is when you upgrade your house uh, where you do substantial improvements to your house, then you have to bring the house all up to code. So you can just grandfather your way in and have this super long beard of like a house that'll blow away in the storm. And by the way, make sure when you're getting work done... You get permits <laughs> and make sure they close those permits out. We had a guy that actually came in yesterday. There used to be a roofing company here in this building and he was looking for the roofing company. I'm like, I have no idea. Call this guy. He might know. And by the way, call this guy. <laughs> Leo Kane, if you uh, need to get that permit closed out because you have to send an engineer to close those permits out once they're open. So it's interesting because we never had that in our contracts, which is what dictates that work, right? Mm -hmm. Then we had a mandatory... Um, open permit search and municipal lien search to see if like they have extra water bills or power bills open they need to pay and now it's like if the buyer checks for it so that's why you guys are seeing less of those did you notice yeah i noticed that you see less than you used to <sighs> <laughs> that's just crazy because it, it, it with the realtors and us they're usually the first call why didn't you find this i'm like well you we weren't looking for it so um, talking about flooding, because we really touched on that really briefly, but how do you actually prepare your house for flooding? How do you know if you should prepare your house for flooding? And then what do you do if your house actually starts flooding? If you live in Florida, you should prepare for flooding. There you go. doesn't matter if you live in a flood zone <laughs> or not. It's always recommended that, back to insurance, you have flood insurance policy. It takes 30 days for a flood insurance policy to go into effect. So if you want to get it There's another well tip in for advance. Adam Talley. There you go. <laughs> Adam Talley, tip of the week. Your flood insurance takes up to 30 days to go into effect. So don't wait until the height of the rainy season to get your flood insurance. Call Adam <laughs> Talley today. Oh, perfect. You would love it. <laughs> so, and this goes back to having a plan. You know you live in Florida. Flooding is a possibility. Having Rubbermaid bins if you need to, to be able to pack up any special belongings so that you could evacuate quickly. If you're experiencing flood water coming up into your house right away, uh, you can always call emergency management, call 911 if you need help evacuating. But the big thing is to get out, run from the water, hide from the wind. <laughs> So water is coming in your home. What do you recommend? Like just leave? Don't do anything else? Well, it, you know, it's calling up and making a notification. Let the county know. Pasco County is very responsive. If there is something that we can do, uh, we'll definitely get, get out there and help with where we can. <laughs> it reminded me of this 
it, it wasn't related to a storm, but I had, I was in Orlando actually for a training and I have a, I had a rental property that was under contract and the appraiser was going out there to do the inspection, the appraisal inspection on the house. And this phone number is like blowing me up. I'm in a class, really not supposed to leave. And then just calls back to back to back to back to back. So I finally, like after the fourth time, I'm like, let me step out and grab this call. So I grab the call and this guy goes, I'm an appraiser. I'm at one, two, three main street. And, uh, you have a flood. The house has about a foot of water in it. What do you want me to do? And I said, uh, open the door. Maybe, (laughs) you know, that might be a good start. Uh, polybutylene pipes, a polybutylene pipe busted Mm. and it really took everything away. So we gave the buyer the option to either get out or stay in. And we redid everything real nice for the next buyer because they canceled. Oh no. It was all right. That (laughs) was laminate floors and nice wood plank tile. And there you go. So, and the kicker of that one is it was a rental property. I literally did not renew my insurance about, I don't know, three weeks before it was supposed to close. The policy was supposed to renew. And I'm like, uh, it's three weeks. I'll just, I'll wait and, you know, it's closing in three weeks. I don't need to renew the policy. So, guess who got to pay for all that? Oh, no. (laughs) Anyway, so renew your policy. Even if you got a day before closing, I would suggest renewing it. And then if you have a plumbing pipe break, the biggest advice I could give you is know where your water main is and turn the thing off. Yeah, what, what do you want me to do? Go to the street. And turn the little knob. Well, this was a town home, so I don't think they really knew where to even look. But yeah, that's what we said. Can you turn it off? Can you turn Please. it off at the main <laughs> thing, wherever it is? Where is it? I don't know. Can you find it? Is that something the county could help with? Like if you didn't know where to find it and you called them, could they locate it, you think? Um, depending on what it is, uh, you can get in touch with the water department. They may know where it is. They can send a representative out to, to kind of help you out. It may, may take a little longer. Um <laughs> well, you're, you're stressed in there and your house is filling with water, but ultimately uh, they can usually help you out and let you know where the mains are. Some of the questions that we get during the show and um, we ask them on the air and then we get some stuff in advance, um, but somebody wants to know, can a container home withstand hurricanes? Can a container home withstand I think they're hurricanes? talking about like, like the... the uh, um, you got this what one? the shipping containers, right? Yeah, you're right. About? Those yeah. are getting more popular. I mean, it all comes back to uh, as metal and strapping. I mean, the shipping containers need to be set onto bearing plates. And if okay, what's bearing... a bearing plate? Slow down. Describe it. Yeah, okay, so what you do is you pour your slab. You don't know what it is either, right? No idea. You pour your slab like you would for a normal house, okay. except in certain places you have steel, red steel plates, and those are called bearing plates. Like, and are they flat? Are they round? Well, they're, are they... they're flat. They're on the ground. Okay. And basically you attach the steel container to those bearing plates. Oh, okay. And then also, you also, for most of them, you're putting together two steel kits, and then that the top of the steel kit becomes your roof deck. So you put roofing on top of that. So that have would you be, done one of those? I have not, but I've <laughs> seen them come up. Yeah, I mean they're getting more popular. Um, it's very affordable housing. So how big are those things? Like how many square footage? You know, roughly the advertised one. Um, eight feet wide by 40 foot deep is an average yeah they can be anywhere from 300 to 600 square feet and then That's you can put home. two, two mm-hmm. together yeah. um but yeah i mean it's all about your fastening um and your wind loading it's all about wind loading so uh, some of the other questions we get to is how do you survive a cat four hurricane and where do you go during the hurricane thoughts on a cruise on a cruise. <laughs> on a cruise. Definitely on a cruise. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, no, really, I I would highly recommend them to sing because <laughs> it was not planned, but it worked out like that. And we, it was like a 3,500 passenger ship and there was only about 900 people on it. Oh, no kidding. we were a mandatory hurricane evacuation. We didn't feel anything in the water at all. There was plenty of food. The drink service was awesome. We never had to wait for a drink or wait in line for anything. Just something way to you should do think it. about if you live here. There you go. Like you'll literally probably, Pat, wouldn't you say you'll pay taxes and port charges only? Don't you think? Pretty close to that. Yeah. I think you can get a cruise super cheap. Nice. You know, I mean, well, your house will be there or won't when you come back and you just file a claim if it's not. There you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Some people freak out and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you recommend people stay versus not? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? If your house is going to be impacted by storm surge or other type of flooding, evacuate. If you have a house that is vulnerable to high winds, evacuate. 
All right. Well, you'll see in Tampa Home Talk when we come back right after the break. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more to Corey. We'll talk about when you guys have to go door to door and kick people out. Absolutely. All I right. want to hear that. Our off air number is 813 377 2775. 813 377 2775. And we're going to talk about a couple new listings not yet on the market when we get back. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk. Got, just got some exciting news if you live in the southeast coast of Florida and if you're going to be traveling northeast from the southeast coast of Florida over the weekend. Are we, you stealing Corey's thunder? I'm not stealing thunder. I said we have some exciting there news. There may be thunder involved, though. No. <laughs> what, what is this exciting so you news? you got a very timely alert, huh? Yeah, yeah not, not so exciting, but I guess the National Hurricane Center is now saying there's a 70% chance of a uh, tropical depression starting late Friday night through the weekend. So we could be seeing more heavy rains around uh, eastern Florida and central Florida. So Which means it should be dry here. Hopefully. We could use it. <laughs> I'll tell a you this. Nice weekend for boating. There's, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of streams and tributaries. That's, that's another thing um, that emergency management does that people don't realize is they don't just do hurricanes. They're an all-hazard. So they work with us on anything from if a tanker truck was to catch on fire on the interstate down to uh, hazmat situations, hazmat scenes, fuel spills, anything. And, and when we were talking about earlier about the uh, emergency operations center and what they do, if you can imagine a giant room with every single arm of the government. So we have, what, 57 lines yep. of business here in Pasco. So you have the top representatives from those 57 lines of business in the same room. And, and that's what Laura does. Is she's the conductor of all those lines of business that are out clearing the roads and, and giving reports or, or Very fire well rescue. Explained. And uh, it's, it's, she has a pretty cool job. It's a pretty cool I thing do. to do. Yeah, I would say so. How long have you been doing it for Pasco? 15, uh, for Pasco, just three years. But I've been in this business for 15 years. I started off in Katrina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, just a little one. I don't know, you know if you've heard of this. Well, I was <laughs> actually making a joke because I saw it on the named list that year, and I'm like, oh, look, Katrina's on there. And so I started like cracking jokes before it even formed. Like the storm didn't even oh, wow. form. And I'm like, oh, wait, Katrina, she's going to be a doozy. Just wait. And then the next thing I know, the storm was like bigger than the size of Florida. I'm like, and then okay, she retired. Okay. Yeah. yeah sure. She got to retire. Just one appearance. And that was it. One and done. Oh, and I'll tell you, I, I was working in news at the time and was, was in new Orleans for all that. And it, it definitely deserved to be retired. It was, uh, it was devastating. Yeah. Yeah. I, we had a lot of relocation people from New Orleans to here. Mm -hmm. And so literally when I would meet him, I'd say, really nice to meet you. You probably don't want to know my name, but you'll never forget it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 well, what can you say? Like, you know, a storm with my name just wiped out their city and now they're here. Like, what am I supposed to say to that? Yeah. yeah. Temporarily change your name to Cat? No, I don't Bomb. like Cat. I'm just yeah. Katrina. Yeah. <laughs> Rena. No. Just Katrina. Rena. <laughs> So let me give you guys some stats real quick. Let's go over the July housing numbers because those are out. And since I was out the week before last, I actually didn't go over quarter two, but I'll do those next hour. Um, so the July housing stats for 2019, closed sales are actually up 8.7%. And so we pull single family homes in the greater Tampa Bay area. So these numbers are going to include Hernando County, Pasco, Pinellas, and Hillsborough. So that's what they consider the greater Tampa Bay area. And the closed sales are up 8.7%. All right. Cash sales are actually down 5.2 percent if you can believe that and our average sales price is up 6.6 percent our dollar volume is also up as well so we had 1.3 billion in july of 2018 we're up to 1.5 billion in july of 2019 in closed sales which means we're up 15.8 percent which means our, our prices are moving up as well median time to contract so we went up about a day so uh, 26 days is the average time to contract, median time to sale. So that's from the time you hit the market to the time you actually sign your paperwork is 70 days. New pending sales for July, meaning they hit the market and now they have a contract, 4,761. And new listings, 5,000. 256 new listings hit the market in July and our pending inventory, which is still a bigger number. That's always a good sign that our market's still hot. So pending houses that actually went under contract 6,270 and our inventory, the number of active listings we have is 10,716. So that's what we call our absorption rate, which means if no more houses came on the market based on the current buyers and the ones we have on the market, it would take exactly 2.6 months to sell everything we had oh, this wow. is this is interesting so paid in cash is down which means that more 
more retail buyers and less investors are yep. actually involved right now in the market. And that makes sense, right? Think about where we're at. Prices are higher. The question we get a lot of times is, we're going to go back to a bubble. We're going to, we're going to, the market's going to crash. I'm going to wait for the next crash. We get that all the time because people are so afraid about the last, really, I think it was more than a recession. I think it's, it, it was, was a, a great, modern day depression. Great, great yeah. recession. Because, um, well, I mean, the dynamics are different than they were in the 30s or 20s when they had the, when they had the Great Depression. Um, more and more people were employed versus self-employed. So now think about it. Your self-employed people, they're not really getting a lot of those community handouts and that kind of stuff. So the numbers show that basically they're higher than what were reported, but it was really close to a, a Great Depression. And actually it was almost, we almost had a global housing crash. Um, there was a book I read called Collusion by Naomi Prince. She talked all about how that housing crash affected global markets. It's a pretty interesting book. A lot of numbers, a lot of stats. Some people might not like it. It can be a hard read for some, um, but it's really good information in there. And my answer to people when they ask me, we're going to have a crash again, I'm going to wait for that. No, we're not. Something major major would have to happen right in order for that to happen again which like war right something like that we can't really control um but the the difference that we're seeing is the, the regulation was stupid like the loans that banks were making back then they never would make they never would have made those those loans wall street pushed them to loosen guidelines which is why they made the loans so now the common sense underwriting is back the normal stuff is in so the people that are buying in the market are actually qualified they're real buyers or they have cash so that's why we're not going to see what we saw before are we going to see a normal real estate cyclical dip Absolutely. It's part of the ebbs and flows that happens about every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we are on a pretty, um, we've had a really long stretch, right, of a uh, seller's market for a really long time. A balanced market is somewhere around six months normal is what they consider balanced, right? Meaning it's not a bar, baller, it's not a buyer's market. It's not a seller's market. It's kind of like in the middle. And now um, they're saying because we've been such a strong seller's market for so long, it's more like four months. And our absorption rate is only 2.6 right now. So it's still a seller's market if you're thinking about selling now's a great time to do that the other little thing that we didn't talk about we probably should is rates actually dipped so um, that was not expected. I think everybody expected the feds to actually hike the rates a little because that's what they have to balance the economy if, if we go south. That's how they can strengthen buying. So if you're a buyer or your seller, now's a great time because rates are probably lower than you're ever going to see. And the, it's a great time for sellers because you're going to get the best market price you can get right now. So yes, real buyers in the market, Leo. Nice. I'm excited. Yeah, we had a very busy summer, so I can't wait to talk about the quarterly. But yeah, it's, I, I like that stat where you got more cash buyers out of the market, which means we have more retail yeah. buyers in. And this music bed means we're, we've run out of time. the only thing that's down is the cash buyers, 5.2%. Overall, everything's up. All right, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. And if you want some more fun information like that, you can call me at 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. Thank you, guys, to all my guests. Thank you. I have Thank more you. questions. I could easily spend another Thank hour you. with you all, but I appreciate you here. And, uh, again, this is Tampa Home Talk. Stick around for hour number two. We've got another great show lined up. Love where you live, or we're going to fix it. Welcome home. Hey.